Hi everybody, sorry for the delay. I got stuck doing a point you fitting, um, a virtual one. Just give me a moment. I'm just gonna set everything up and then we'll get going in a second. Um, gonna double stream in a sec. Let me just make sure I've got this right. Okay. Let's pin it. Hi, Sander. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure I'm all set up for the other stream and my um, laptops are all connected. Here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna set up the second stream. Rachel's here, but we'll get going in a sec because I need to do the second stream details. As we all know, it's a little bit complex. So let me just bring up the software. So I was just doing a virtual fitting, which went really well. So just to promote my services, I am indeed still doing virtual fittings and I will be open from my fitting room in July, but it will be limited to one customer at a time and we will have to wear masks and there will be, you know, everything in place to make it very safe for everybody. Um, and I won't be fitting at dance schools until the dance schools reopen, which we don't know when that is yet in England anyway. So just making sure I've got all the details here, then we'll get going. Sorry for the delay. Let me just get this one up. I'm a bit everywhere today. I've had a super busy day. Okay, let's grab the other one. Nearly ready, sorry. Start streaming, tap the button. Oh, thanks. It's, um, oh, hang on. I can't wait to get it dyed because look at my roots. They're huge. But thankfully the salon's open in July in England. So I'm booked in for the 11th because I'm super pumped to get my roots sorted. Let me just make sure it's all streaming here. Okay. I think I'm finally ready. I just need to pop this one on the floor. Then I need to open the other laptop so I can look at the comment stream from Grishko World. Nearly, nearly, nearly there. Okay. Sorry, just got to make a comment on that one. There we go. I'm all ready. Yes, finally. <laughs> okay, so now we can finally join Rachel. No. Oh. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks, so nice to see you. I know, it feels like forever since our last stream, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels like a long time. I'm so excited about all the pointers I got. Oh my God, so exciting. So for you guys who didn't Hello. know, um, Rachel is one of our newest ambassadors and she's just got all her stuff and she's wearing one of our Grishka, um, Grishka Nikolai um, Bolshoi Stars Senses Leotards. Look at that, that's really pretty. And skirt skirt as well. It looks really nice. Oh, and Thanks, I've actually I fitted it. her recently um, with some new shoes, but she's got quite a few there, which we'll go through after a bit of a chat, first of all. Um, so everyone who's joining, please stay tuned because it will be a very exciting stream. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah. let's, let's talk a little bit about everything that's been happening right recently in the world, in the dance world. Um, would you like to start? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, it's been really encouraging to see, um, at least within ABTE, how we've um, just been able to address, like, in light of the Black Lives Matter movement, been able to address the ways that we as a company can um, sort of get our house in order and figure out that I think every sort of company, and especially in the dance world, is really acknowledging how much racial injustice there is. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And just all of the ways that we can, yeah, do better about um, making sure that everyone actually feels included and yes. respected. Um, yeah, and really feels equal. Uh, so we actually did last year, we had a DEI initiative, uh, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we, oh. um, yeah, we had like some training um, and uh, several sort of meetings, education meetings. And so I think going forward, we're, we've had a lot of meetings, which is really cool. So um, initially they were just so that everybody, especially like in just in order to support our black and brown dancers, that they really felt like they had, and not just dancers, um, staff members in yes. all of the departments, yes. that they felt like they had... Um, uh, the goal was to give them a space to share the ways that they might, um, whatever their experiences have been, and um, whether it's specifically through ABT or just the dance world, um, mm -hmm. ways that they've felt like they were treated um, just really poorly. Um, and then from hearing those stories, being able to address, okay, how how do we need to, what do we need to do to move forward to make to make things um, better and a lot of it I think is really amazing a lot of it really is like self-reflection and education so they've been sending out resources for us which is so nice to sort of read and just learn more about um yeah about the history of the dance world and about um America and yeah so it's been that's been really nice I'm grateful that we've been able to um at least make an effort to have more voices heard and then really look Absolutely. at going forward how, yeah how can we how can we change things and do a better job? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of fixing the things that have just been shoved under the rug. Yes, um, definitely. I think it's come out at, the, at such a great time because, I mean, obviously we've been in lockdown. Um, obviously it's not great being in lockdown, but I think it's been good timing in a sense because people have had more time to sit around and think about their lives and what, what's going on in the world and actually, you know, realise... <sighs> It's very tricky in the UK as well, because I'll tell you what was really funny, is like, when everything was going on in America, they some people in the UK were like, oh, it's fine, it's America, it's not here. And it's like, hang on a minute, it is in the UK, it's everywhere, we have this yeah. problem. It's not, don't just think, because we're in the UK, that we're cut off from America, and we don't have racists in the UK, because we certainly do, there are plenty of them. Mm -hmm um yeah. you know it was really hilarious like people even like older generation that i spoke to were like oh yeah do you hear what's happening in america and i was like yeah and i was like i think it's really great that people are protesting and people are making the stance and they some of them were literally like oh well i hope they don't protest over here and i was like what planet are you from exactly everyone should be making a difference in this world and it's about time that people open their eyes and also yeah. it's, it's wonderful now because of course with the dance community and with dance brands, I mean, we have we have always been working on making different coloured satins and canvases anyways. Um, it's something that I've been pushing for a very long time um, because I do think, you know, it's been a long time coming. And with, with certain brands, I feel like it was never going to come, which I think is ridiculous because it should have already been there. Why wasn't it, you know? Um, and I was really thrilled when in February when I was in Los Angeles and we saw that actually... Grishko and Nikolai are coming out with different satins and canvases for point shoes, but also our slippers have always been available in a lot of shades, which is fantastic. Um, but I was really thrilled to see that finally we're going to get point shoes that we can have for many um, different shades available, but also the fact that we can branch on it, we can work on it to make it even more diverse. Because, of course, the problem, I think, as a point shoe fitter as well, is, as you know, as a professional with pancaking shoes, is not everyone is going to have the exact same shades as the point shoes that we've got coming out in the fabrics. We need more. There's got to be more because there are such there, even as a makeup artist, um, you know, this is another, oh my God, it's another good topic. It's going to go branch off a little bit, but 
another good topic is on some of the makeup forums and makeup groups on Facebook, there were some people piping in and saying that they was working on set as like an actress and the makeup artist didn't know what to do with them. That is atrocious. Like in this day and age, a makeup artist does not know what to do with different skins and different hair. Like what planet are you on? This shouldn't be happening. Yeah. In 2020, yeah. their training should include this. God, if I was ever right. on set and I and I knew that I couldn't do someone's makeup because of their skin tone, what? I would be mortified. I've always right. included everybody and found, you know, you've got, to, as a makeup artist, your job is to create the shades required. You are an artist. You have to mix colors together to get what you need. And also the correct, you have to understand different types of skin. And also not just that, but even mature skin is different with makeup too, right? So it's been very interesting because it's branched out a lot of interesting um, situations that are going on in the world still. And also it's opened people's eyes up because I really hated the fact that some people were just like, oh yeah, well, you know, racism doesn't really exist now in the UK. It's like, oh, oh my God, it really does still exist. I've got plenty of friends that go through some seriously awful situations on a daily basis. Yeah, it's been really empowering to see how the movement is like just all over the world and how the protests have been taking place all over the world. Exactly. Um, and to your point about um, this coming right after the quarantine, it actually was really interesting, even just within ABT as, um, as a company, uh, because we've been away for so long, we've, ABT has done an amazing job of keep, keeping us um, like communicating and keeping us in the loop. So we've been having a lot more opportunities to connect with other parts of the organization that we normally don't. So dancers are connecting more with administration, with orchestra members, um, and we're having all staff meetings where everyone is really a part of the conversation. So we really did like set up the stage in a unique way so that when we have that going into conversations about um, bringing more diversity and equity and inclusion um, and just racial equality within the company that we were sort of prepped to be having conversations with all of the departments mm -hmm. being a part of it and everyone um, participating. So like, whereas maybe if we had an all staff meeting at ABT, we'd have, you know, like 50 people show up when we have these zoom all staff meetings, there's like 200 people there. So wow. it's really, yeah, it's just a much better scenario in order to, because having people communicate is, obviously so so much a part of the best way to move forward so it's oh, been yeah, encouraging absolutely. yeah abt also set up like an internal um committee mm -hmm. based on or with the goal of um promoting racial equality within abt and sort of and promoting education and then hopefully spanning out um so that it can be a support group for black and brown brown dancers in all uh, within the dance community and, and all other ballet companies and other dance style companies. Um, so yeah, it's been really, really um, empowering, I guess, just to see how much everyone cares and how much is really, how much everyone's willing to to come together and work on this. So, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's about time, like a long time yeah. coming, I think. Um, and Absolutely. It's, it's nice to see that um, what is interesting though, is some brands are like jumping on board just because they see it as a marketing opportunity which yeah. i think is really yeah. bad like some of this yeah. <laughs> there's like um some brands that are literally left it last minute to announce that they're going to do something about it and it's like a bit late really right. like you should have been thinking about this before um so it yeah. has been kind of fascinating with some of the brands um yeah. yeah we're super excited as a brand to finally be able to offer to everybody which we had um for those just joining we had it in motion for a long time in february we officially announced it to retailers with our different tones of satin and canvas. Um, but because of the pandemic, we've been unable to get all our fabrics together to create the products. Um, but it's super wonderful that we can now do this for everybody. And we welcome, of course, all your input. We want to hear from you guys. Any recommendations? Obviously, I'm hoping that they'll next work on tights because I don't think Grishko and Nikolai have um, quite managed a lot of different tones of tights yet. So that would be really wonderful right. if they could do that because um you know it's about it's just it just blows my mind that you know in 2020 that we have this problem when we really shouldn't be having it yeah <laughs> yeah, it's yeah and crazy. hopefully the more that yeah like leadership comes forward to say this is really important we need to address this and we're gonna yeah support our black and brown dancer friends um yeah that then hopefully more people will follow suit 
Absolutely. Um, and it was really interesting to hear what you were saying about like makeup and hair too, because that's obviously such a part of yeah. the dance community as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly, so, right? Yeah. It's mad. And it really blew my mind because, I mean, I'm 32 and I've been doing makeup for a really long time since, geez, 16. I was about 16. And um, yeah. I didn't uh, qualify it immediately because in the UK, I, I don't know how it is in America, but anyone can literally be a makeup artist which is scary because some people aren't qualified and you know it's unhygienic and whatever but even right. when in my training you know everything was covered you know um how to deal with all all types of face not not just we're not just talking about skin tones though but also we're talking about um you know mature skin as well because mature skin is very different to apply makeup to also um and learning yeah. about different hair as well because um even as a hairdresser like my my sister has learned how to how to style afro hair um because you know again i even have you know some of my model friends say to me that are oh, like afro caribbean they say that sometimes they're on set and the team don't know how to style their hair and it's like oh my god seriously yeah. now <laughs> yeah yeah and it's amazing so much of the solution really is just like education um Absolutely. and just a willingness to understand that diversity like will always bring um better solutions it will make it will make it better and it is a bummer that ballet has really been just like such a white elite mm -hmm. um I agree. Art for so long. yeah so i think as we all acknowledge just yeah that like diversity will genuinely make it better in every way so of course that's something that we want and we can should be willing to work towards towards that definitely so it's exciting to, be, to hear how um different companies are supporting the cause and helping out so thank you for being willing to chat and share oh no worries i think i love to speak about you know all types of topics especially when you know we have this opportunity on a, on a great platform to be able to put our word out yeah. there and this is what i also love yeah. about youtube as well because it's so freeing to, to have that that option to create your own videos and have your voice heard um yeah I mean, the internet in general is just a godsend really <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially during the time of coronavirus, it's oh been especially God. helpful. <laughs> it really is. So talking of coronavirus, um, do you guys know when you're going back to the studios yet, or how's that all going for you? Um, our our fall season is still going ahead as planned, um, so the goal is to get back into the studios um, by the end of August. Um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely, we'll see how how things move forward everything is definitely up in the air in a way so we'll see if yeah if it, it's scheduled to go ahead though so oh, hopefully scary. we'll be back the thing yeah. that i find really interesting about america is all the different states have different laws <laughs> yeah. whereas in the it's uk it's like yep yeah, this is how it's going and there's no other way about it whereas in america they all do their own thing um and it's like it's fascinating like even like I've noticed in Florida, for example, everything's really open out there now, and every you know there are there are summer intensives still going ahead. Um, I don't know; yeah. it's all very different everywhere, and I find it very confusing. It's like, what do you believe? Like, how is the best way to go ahead? Even with yeah. like regards to opening again, my business, like I'm starting to do point two fittings for my fitting room again next month, but I'm quite scared about it. You know, I'm going to have everyone right. like I'm going to have uh, me and the dancer present, one parent only. I don't want too many people right. around. Going to do face masks, sanitizing everything, um, and we'll mm -hmm. see how it goes. But I just, you yeah. know, I couldn't sit around any longer without opening my business officially because there's only so much yeah. you can do virtually. And um, and although virtual fittings are good and everything, it's not the same as in person. Um, so I'm looking yeah. forward to finally being able to, um, you know, actually work properly. Yeah. Um, so we're just I'm suffering. Definitely the looking forward to being back in the studio too. Yeah, right. I can imagine, especially when you're professional, because it must feel very restrictive. Because there's only so much you can do at home, right? Yeah, I think the main thing is just uh, not being able to perform. Because yeah. obviously, we're used to like p periods where you're just training. Um, but there's definitely something special about performing. So it's a bummer when you can't yes. do that for a long time. Yes, absolutely. Um, so with your first package that you got from Nikolai, do you want to show us what you've got, like some of the stuff? Yeah, sure. So um, a bunch of leotards, and uh -huh. this was one of the dance bags that I oh, really yes, liked. that's one of my and favorites too. Also, I glued on the, I've never used these before, but oh, for the first time I glued on Yep, a lot of um, my customers yeah, love these. Which have been really helpful for um, 
just like also I, I had access to a studio and the floor was wood. Oh, um, yeah, it God. was new for me. So it was really slippery and having um, these the like suede tips really helped. Um, yeah, they're very handy. Yeah. Um, for you guys yeah, watching that might not know about these, um, we sell them on their own and you apply them to the platform of your point and the pleats like this. Um, I have a video on YouTube and Instagram TV on how to do it if anyone gets stuck. Yeah, I watched your video to <laughs> know how to do them. I've never done it before. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm glad it worked. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, what they do is they provide more grip and they also stop the satin from coming off the platform. Um, of course, there's many ways to, I mean, as you guys know, I darn the edge of mine like this. But this, if I was dancing on wood, I would need something a bit extra because it's still a bit slippery. Um, and of course, some yeah. dancers can't use rosin. And with the suede, it also extends the life of the platform a little bit more as well. So in England, it's very popular for dancers that don't want to dance to put the suede caps on because it means less time for them and they haven't got to freak out about learning how to darn a point shoe. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I would love to, um, I'm really excited to hear like your thoughts on the point shoes oh, and yeah, the differences. Oh yeah, I'm super excited. But, yeah, I have two pairs of the 3007s. Yeah. So are they, do you know if they're the same or if there's, if they're So the when you got your shoes, did any of the packaging have special written on the front by any chance? Um, like the plastic, on the front of the plastic Yeah, so packaging? like on here, was there a, a sticker saying yeah. special? Yes. Oh, great. So that's yeah. good. So they've sent you one of your special order pairs. Perfect. So we'll, we'll look at them all because I'm curious. Um, so I'm just yeah. going to get your, the stats up about what I changed about the shoes so we can tell the viewers. Um, one moment. Yeah. And just get it up. It's funny too, like looking at these are the pair that I was wearing oh, wow. for like the entirety of coronavirus. They're super, <laughs> uh, super dead and dirty. And then now I have a bunch of like really shiny, Amazing. beautiful new pairs. Okay, let me find the details. Um, I think I do like the Novas better than the 3007s. Sure. Um, it's probably because yeah, you're, you're very used to the Nova as well. Do you know what I mean? When, I when someone's so. very used to a shoe, it's kind of like home to them. Yeah, yeah. But it is funny because I, I have been wearing the... Um, the 3007 a lot the 3007s a lot uh -huh. um, and so the one thing that i like less about them than the novas is that they um well i can show you when i put them on too but they break like really sharply yeah, in the middle mean. yeah and the novas have more of like a yes. gentle yeah no, you're very is... right and um the reasons for that for people that might not know um the shape construction in nova is different to 3007 so um, in the 3007, it has a shank construction that, let me just grab one out. It has a shank construction that is fully flexible throughout the whole of the sole, whereas the Nova doesn't. It's more stiffer on the lower portion. And with the 3007, when it, this is a medium, when it bends, it wants to break a little bit lower down, which is nice mm. for dancers that struggle to get over onto the full point. Um, for example, I'm one of those, so it works a treat for me. But I have found yeah. that with more flexible dancers or professional dancers, it will feel a bit strange to them because they're not used to that dramatic suppleness in that area. Um, yeah. So the 3007 features that. Don't forget, you guys in America, you can still get 2007 if you need it. You just need to ask your retailer. Um, but of course, if you struggle in 2007, anyone watching, 3007 will work better because of the more flexible shank. Um, whereas Nova has a different shank construction. In the standard shank, this is a medium in a pro. So the pro means sound absorption, but it also comes in, um, 3007 comes in pro as well, by the way. It also comes in flex, which I'll get on about a little bit later in the stream. But the pro option has a little bit more flex in the shank, but the shank construction on Nova bends only at the three quarter. It doesn't bend right. lower down like 3007 does. So it's very nice for a well-developed foot, a strong foot. Um, in a softer shank, it can work on weaker feet sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but also the Nova has a longer vamp and it has longer wings, lower sides, lower heel, um, a double satin. And the platform is different. It's more oval shape compared to the shape of the 3007 platform. Yeah. It's funny, I didn't think I would notice that, but I actually did, like, being on point in the 3007 versus the Nova, I can tell 
yeah, just the difference. Yeah, it's, it's to me, it's really obvious. But some dancers, right, when I get them yeah. to compare them, they're like, I can't feel the difference. I'm like, what do you mean you can't feel the difference? I can see it. Yeah. Because yeah. also, yeah, yeah, you can notice um, the platform on 3007, it's deeper this way, up high. Right. Whereas the platform yeah. height on Nova is lower. It's a bit more, it's not as um, wide as height. And the reason for that is right. due to the um, profile height of the shoe as well. So the lower profile right. a shoe is, um, for those of you who don't know, the profile is also known as the crown of the shoe, which is the height here. Um, when it's lower, it will dictate how much platform you've got. But also when the shoe is more tapered in the box and more narrow in width, it will also dictate the shape of the platform. Yeah. Um, so in your special order Nova Pros, I did five and a half in 4X width. We did medium three quarter shape with easy roll through. We had the wing made mm -hmm. one centimetre higher, the heel made mm -hmm. 0.5 centimetre shorter. Then we had a cotton drawstring and the platform made wider. Fab. So do you know what we should do actually? We should put yes, on what? one. Have you got one of your normal Novas? We could do a normal yes. Nova on one foot and a That's special order Nova on yeah. the other. Yeah. And they'll, the new, the Nova Pros will look a lot nicer too, just because my <laughs> old Novas are so dirty. Because sure. I was wearing them on every floor wherever <laughs> I was taking class. Okay. So this is not the Nova Pro Flex, right? This is just the Nova. It's just the Nova Pro, right. yeah. So, oh yeah, for the um, dancers wondering, the Flex option is very, very, very bendy, um, which, you know, is good for a stage-ready shoe or someone with a weaker foot might like it, but it's not really a workhorse shoe. So with a Flex Shanky Nova, it's not going to last as, longer, as long as, say, a standard Nova or a Pro Nova. Um, also, pro means sound absorption, so it means that it's quieter, which is great for people on stage a lot because it won't make such a racket. But the pro flex and the flex also has a little the sound absorption too, but the standard Nova doesn't. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh yeah, three thousand and seven also comes in pro and pro flex, and. Like I mentioned earlier, if you are a dancer with a lot of flexibility in your feet, then 3007 off the peg might not work perfectly. You might need a few custom adjustments to it, or you might prefer the classic 2007 or another one of our many other shoes that we do, because we do a lot of shoes. <laughs> okay, so let's see how you can... Can you pop it on the floor, by the Yeah, that's better. Great idea. So what we're okay, doing first, so... can we do um, parallel from the front on point? Yeah. Ooh, I need a bar. Yeah, I was going to say if you got some. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. So I know, like, your old Dover is dead, but can you guys see the way that with the higher wing, it really flatters her foot line more because it sucks around the side of the foot and it gives her a lot more pull up. Whereas in the shoe with the shorter wing, which is not a custom shoe, um, it's making Rachel bulge at the side a little bit. And she can't elongate her instep. Um, if you just turn out to first position. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's such a difference. Mm -hmm. In the special order, she can really pull up out of her shoe. And it gives a really, really beautiful line to her arch and her instep. And with the lower heel, it looks so sleek. Whereas in the old shoe, which is a standard Nova, the break point of the shank is a little bit odd. And also, the lot of there's a lot of heel. But can you see the way that she's kind of sunken into it? Because it is a bit dead as well. Um, <laughs> Ray, can you feel the difference, Rachel, in how, like, elongated your foot feels in the new shoe? Yes, definitely. And it's it was amazing. funny because I, I was wearing, like, trying out the different new shoes, both the 3007s and the Nova Pros. Um, and so I wasn't wearing my old shoe. And then I wore this, the old pair once, like, just I put them on. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's, it's like, way different. I... Yeah, it's just funny that it felt normal for so long. And then I was like, oh, wow. It's crazy, right? Very and I'm so grateful yeah. that just over a virtual fit, you know, I was able to make some, like, adjustments that really have made a difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I know I knew I'd see a difference, but I was, I'm was, i actually astounded at how much of a difference there is. It's incredible. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I can't wait till one day when I'm back in America and I can, like, actually fit you in person. Because, wow, I'll be able to do Me even too. more amazing things. <laughs> I would love to come to England sometime. Yeah, you should. Sit there. You really should. We'll take a trip. Have you ever been to England before? Um, yes, I went once when we were in studio company. We did an exchange with the Royal Ballet. Ah. Um, yeah. And then 
And then also the company, professional company toured to Paris once. And after that, I, I traveled around England um, just like for a week because um, I'd never been to sort of the outskirts. I'd also only been to London. So yeah, I love it. It's actually, I actually like it a little bit more even than Paris, which is really surprising to a lot of people. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I love oh, it. That's really cool. Love it. Um, so yeah. yeah, God, I'm I'm really astounded at the differences considering I fit those socially. <laughs> wow, this lockdown yeah. has been such an education. I have learned so much about my, like, I never thought I could fit shoes virtually until lockdown happened. And now I've astounded yeah. myself because I've fitted so many virtual people and done so much difference. I've done people from India, um, Sweden, um, Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, yeah. so now what I want to do is I want you to keep on your special order Nova Pro on one foot. Okay. And on the other foot, you're going to pop on a 3007. So, um, okay. oh, by the way, with the shoes that they sent you, was it, um, did you say it was two pairs? Um, I have two pairs of the 3007s, yeah. Oh, so um, did they, can you, um, in the 3007s, what was the difference between the two pairs? So that's what I'm not sure. And on the packaging, it made it look like everything was the same. I wonder if one of the pairs is a Proflex. So the best way to I tell... Know. Yeah. Um, grab um, one of each of the pairs of 3007s. And then okay. what I want you to do is um, you're going to hold the shoe side on like this. And you're going to bend it at the arch area. And I want to see the flexibility okay. in it. Oh, that looks like a pro flex. Okay, and then yeah. this is another one. But also, this one I've worn quite a bit more than that other one, so I don't know if that makes a difference. There's more yeah. straight. Maybe there's more. Yeah, it looks like you've got a pro flex, and it looks like you've got a standard one as well. Also, just so okay. you just know, um, the pro flex option does come in soft, medium, and hard as well. Um, oh. I think you might have been given. Oh, no, I remember now, actually. I remember. In the 3007, they gave you a standard pair in 5.5 4X medium. But also, I requested that they send you a 3007 in a pro version as well. Um, so that's the difference. But, yeah, the pro does have more flexibility. Um, so okay, that, so one pro and one pro. Yeah, so that would be why the, the, the mega bendy one is as bendy as it is. But the pro option, um, I wanted to try you in because I was curious to see the breakdown of the shoe and it also the pro is very good for like a stage ready um right did they ever send you an nova flex or was that, was that yes i have a uh, yes i have a nova pro flex and a no just a nova oh, pro fantastic okay this is great we have so much opportunity to show everybody <laughs> i know it was it's been really interesting to just like try feel the differences and try them on okay so this is the 3007 I don't, I think maybe this is the pro as opposed sure, to the worries. regular, but you'll, you'll know more than I will. <laughs> Hi, Georgia. Georgia's one of our ambassadors as well. She just joined the stream. Hi, Georgia. Okay. So let's have a little look at this. Um, yeah. So what we get with the 3007 is we do get the wing problem like we got in the standard Nova. But also, just for the viewers watching, the 3007 doesn't have as long a wing as Nova anyway. So that's why we get that. Just turn out to first position. Oh, yeah. And you do go over a lot more in the 3007, right? <laughs> it's like banana time. <laughs> um, can we see from the back in parallel as well? And then turn out to first position on point as well. Yeah, so I still really love the Nova on you the most. Um, with the 3007, it could work better with adjustments. But what I really love about Nova on you is I really enjoy the sleek look. I like how low yeah. the sides and you are because it really accentuates your arch. Um, yeah. People wondering why we cut the shoe down. For professionals um, and dancers in full-time training, we do it a lot because we want to showcase their foot as much as we can. So when we take the sides down, the heel down, what it does is when the dancer is on point from the side or in a first position or second position, if she's on stage, it will really draw the audience to look at the shape of the foot. Whereas if they've got too much fabric at the side of the heel, it can look saggy, but it can also drown the foot. 
and it can make the dancer look like she hasn't got much arch there when she's actually got an arch. I mean, as we can see, Rachel has beautiful feet anyways, so she's yeah. lucky she has that bonus of having a great foot. <laughs> um, but now could we do a Nova Flex and a Nova Custom yeah. on one foot? Yeah. Fabulous. So this is three. So what's the main difference between the 3007 Pro and the regular 3007? Um, oh, so the 3007 Pro, it has sound absorption in it, but also it has a little bit more flexibility in the shank and the box paste. And the Flex okay. version has an extremely flexible shank. And it's also got sound absorption as well. But obviously, it's, okay. very, it's very interesting because the Shank in 3007 is a completely new Shank. It's got easy roll yes. through technology anyways. So when you think about it, if you have, say, a 3007 in a Pro Flex, it's going to be mega bendy. Okay. And for dancers watching and curious about Pro Flex Shanks, um, I just want to um, tell you that there's a video on my IGTV. And it's all about Grishko and Nikolai Shanks and the constructions because a lot of people don't know a lot about the differences. Because for example, in Frotte in Proflex, it's, it's a lot thicker and it's a lot more um, sturdy. Whereas if you compare it to a Proflex in say 2007, 3007 um, or Maya 1, it will feel like those options are more very, very bendy and they die quicker. Okay, so let's have a little look at these if you stand up in parallel on point. So as you can see in the custom shoe, um, it still looks better at the wing because it encases the sides of her toe joints a lot more and she's a lot more pulled up in it. But in the standard Nova, even in the flex option, we get the bulge at the side and she's not quite elongated in the shoe. If you just turn that to first. Um, I mean, as we can see as well, with the modifications that we made on the custom shoe, the low sides and heel give a lot more flattering line and she can pull up the shoe better with the higher wings. Um, whereas the shoe with um, no adjustments, even in the flex shank and the standard shank, it looks saggy on her foot and she tends to collapse into it a little bit. She can't pull up as much as she would like to. Can we see from the side in parallel as well, please? Yeah. And as you can see, this side round, she can um, really pull up there. Um, she's got, obviously, a wonderful technique anyway. She's a professional. <laughs> from this side... Oh. We can see a little bit of a difference um, here in the way the instep, she, the instep is more pulled upwards. Can we just see from the back in parallel as well? From the back, it's not as obvious what we've done, but can you see the shape? Um, if you step apart a little bit, can you see on the shoe on the right, she kind of falls down, whereas the shoe on the left, she can suck up. That's the best word I can describe. <laughs> <laughs> she's more taller and it's giving more shape and definition to her foot and her leg line whereas the leg line on the right um she's kind of it looks it makes her look distorted a little bit if you turn up to first position and again we can see with the lower sides and heel on the left shoe it gives a more streamlined appearance and the shank is sucking in at the right angle of her arch which is a medium shank by the way with a three quarter whereas the shank on the right one um it's a flex nova it's breaking a little bit too low down for her and the um, extra fabric on the heel and sides is not showing off her foot as much as we could have it shown off. Can you feel a difference between them, Rachel? Yes, yes. Um, definitely, the, this is the Pro Flex, right? Yeah. I can feel just that it's like a little bit, like the shank is, I guess, softer or something. So I like sort of sit down in it more, whereas this one's more lifted. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, isn't yeah. it? It's more, I can feel that the shank is more bendy. Yeah. Um, Which, yeah. Um, just so people know that sometimes professionals might choose a flex shank, um, pro flex or flex. We call Nova Nova flex, not Nova pro flex for some reason. Um, but sometimes they will choose to wear a flex shank or even a super soft in a standard for say contemporary ballets where they've got a lot of demi point action and really quick rolling like through the shoes. Yeah, you know, yeah, know, whereas um, in a different role where they want more support from the lower portion of the shank, they will go for a shoe that's a bit tougher here, so it gives them more support, especially if they're balancing a lot on one foot. Yeah. And I'm sure Rachel can tell us a little bit about that. So, like, when you're dancing different roles, how do the shoes affect you personally? What can you notice when you're on point and your shoes are starting to die and stuff like that? This will be really interesting yeah. to tell the viewers about. 
Right. So definitely balancing is key. If your shoe is dead, it's incredibly more challenging to, to balance. And if your shoe is lifted, you can pull up your shoe. It makes balancing a lot easier. Um, I think for turning, it's a little individual, whether people like more dead or um, newer shoes. I think I prefer newer shoes um, just because in this, the same sense that turns are balanced. I like to feel sort of supported in my shoes. Um, but for pieces that have repertoire that has a lot of footwork um, and particularly jumps. I like my shoes to be softer because I really want to be able to articulate yeah, uh -huh. my feet. Articulating my feet in jumps in point shoes is something that I struggle with already. Uh -huh. So I, I would rather be able to have as much movement in my foot as possible. Yes. And, um, especially when I, like I was talking about how the 3007s break, um, I guess, you know, lower or higher. Yeah, uh -huh. In my end, when it when I have like a very definite break like that, as opposed to a more rounded um, shape, it I find it really hard to articulate my toes or like to use this bottom half nice. because yeah, because the um, the arch break is like so sharp. Yes. Um. So I I d definitely don't enjoy jumping in shoes like that as no. much. Um. Just because I don't feel like I can point my toes and and your foot <laughs> like the power from your foot gives you a lot of your jump. Yes, um, absolutely. So I feel like it takes away from that also. Yeah, no, good points, yeah. actually. This is very educational for people watching that don't know much about how professionals work as well. Because um, even as a fitter, it's very interesting when you fit a professional because it's it's a very different ball game. Um, you've got to think about, you know, how many hours on point, how their shoe dies, because everyone kills their shoes different. Have they had a recent right. injury? Um you need to think about do they sweat a lot in their shoes people that sweat more will need more box paste and they might even need our tropicana paste so that their box lasts longer so that way they haven't got a peach shellac in their box or using jet glue um so there's many factors and the wonderful thing about grishko nikolai point shoes is the fact that we can special order the shoes to the finest of details um it's incredible how much variation that we have but also the fact we can even do custom lasts i mean it's just, it just astounds me, like the amount of brands that I've worn in the past and the amount of struggles that I personally had. And you know what also annoyed me is the fact that so many of my teachers would blame the shoe. Um, sorry, blame me. They'd be like, it's the shoe's fine. You've just got to man up. You've just got to get on with it. And it's like, actually, hold on a minute. I'm struggling. Right. I'm in pain. I can't continue this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's funny. So many people, I mean, this is primarily people who are not who are not in the dance world or don't dance on point um expect that dancing on point is really painful but often even dancers who do dance on point like we'll talk about how painful um their feet are or how painful dancing on point is but i like have really never found i mean on the rare occasion that i've had a blister which has been maybe like eight times in my entire life wow. of being a ballet dancer yeah like i i genuinely feel like punches are pretty comfy like right. I mean definitely if you haven't been wearing them for a long time and you suddenly have to wear them for eight hours um you know like maybe your feet ache a bit but actually dancing on point is not like painful at exactly. all really and I think a lot of that is just getting a shoe that fits you properly yes. and having like obviously wearing proper um whether you wear toe pads or figuring out what works best yeah, for your foot absolutely and you know, it doesn't what? need to be painful. No, be it comfy. doesn't. It really doesn't. And guys, if you're watching and you're suffering, please don't suffer any longer. You don't need to. Yeah. Um, I've had to, I've had dancers come to me that say they've been somewhere else and they've sent them out the shop because they don't know what to do with them. And I've literally sat them mm -hmm. down. I'm like, I know how to solve that. This is what you need. Um, and I'm like, yeah. it sounds like when some fitters just don't know how to communicate and sort things out um right also guys i know that sometimes you have teachers that say to you, you have to go to a certain place to get your point shoes if that's not working for you don't worry go somewhere else because a yeah. teacher should be looking out for your best interests and making sure that you are comfortable and supported and ensuring that you can dance to your best potential you shouldn't have to struggle and you know i mean you've all seen the point shoe comparison pictures i put up on my instagram and the videos and the crazy sights that I get to see on a daily basis. Um, and it's still astounding that in 2020, we still get teachers that seem to believe that their dancers should be wearing a brand that they wore 50 years ago. Um, and, right. you know, it just doesn't work that way. Feet, feet change, strength changes, technique. Yeah. It's really interesting. Like, I think a lot of the dance world is really based in 
unfortunately. Like, it's history in, like, ritual and tradition. And um, I think that is part of the reason why, um, like, racism has, I mean, it, it's a part of all of our culture, but especially in the dance world, it seems like that's part of the reason that, um, just because people are, like, have such a um, unwillingness to change the way that things have been, or, like, they just really like the way that something is, and mm -hmm. they're not interested in hearing new ideas or finding a new way. And I do feel like in, in sometimes in dance teachers that can be a part of it, or even in companies or whatever, like wanting to do things the way that they always have been done and not being willing to say, maybe some, maybe a new way is better. Absolutely. And it's like, um, the other thing I struggle with a lot is, you know, sometimes you get dancers that are not getting, for example, not getting over on point enough, they're pulled back a lot. And teachers, yeah. again, will blame it on the dancer and they'll, they'll just leave them at the bar and just say, oh, you need right. to do this exercise, you need to work on this, and making the dancer lose more and more confidence. But let me tell you, everyone, I'd say 80% of the time, that problem is down to the shoe and the strength of the shoe chosen for that dancer. I was one of them. I used to struggle, uh, my left foot especially, because my left foot has been injured a lot in the past. And, you know, once I found the shoe, I was over fine. It's, you know, don't get me wrong. There's some rare chances in life where some people cannot do point work. It's rare, but they're out there. Um, and that can be a combination of a variety of things such as health conditions, or it can be the fact that they've got, their ankles don't point enough because you've got to have enough range. It's very crucial. Yeah. Um, it's one of the things I personally look for when I'm doing a point assessment. Um, but also, you know, Another misconception with ballet teachers even in this country is they think that in order to go on point that you need to have done up to a certain grade of ballet, oh my goodness, <laughs> and you have to um, have just strong enough feet and ankles. Oh my God, what happened to looking at knees, alignment? What happened to thinking about the way the, the dancer stands in general? Um, core strength, what, what happened to all of this? Why is it just about the feet and ankles now? What's going on? Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's just absolutely insane. And, um, you know, what's also interesting is there are some professionals out there that when I go and watch ballet, I find it very difficult to just sit there and enjoy the ballet. I end up just looking at their feet and their shoes. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, especially when you know so much about oh how God, punches work. And and I'm like, hard oh, not my to. God, how is she wearing yeah. this shoe right now? Right, right. Right. Yeah. Almost having a heart attack 90% of the time. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, um, sometimes with professionals as well, they just don't have the time or the people around them to help them out. And I right. want to, you know, I'm reaching out to more and more professionals these days and helping them realize little problems they're having and how we can solve it. Um, because unfortunately, in some brands of point shoes, they don't offer the kind of customization that we offer. Um, or to the kind of levels of quality that Grishko and Nikolai offer either. I mean, for people mm -hmm. that aren't aware about our brand, all the point shoes are made by hand still, every little detail. And we have, you know, very skilled cobblers that use very old traditional methods. All our shoes are made in Russia, not like the fakes that are still going around. <laughs> Thought I'd drop that in there. Um, yeah. Do you know what? I'm just going to speak about that a little bit because I think it's important. Yeah. So I've got some Nikolai's here as well, because I wanted to be able to show people, because obviously, just so you know, in case people aren't aware, in Europe, I'm in UK, for example, our name is Grishko here. But for you guys in America, you're under Mr. Grishko's first name, which is Nikolai, and your shoes will look like this. So we'll have Nikolai here and Made in Russia, just like that, as you can see on Rachel's as well. So when you're in America, okay. and if you're getting a new pair of Nikolai's, this is what they'll look like. They will not have made, handmade. It will have Nikolai made in Russia. This is important. And why is this important? Because there are still fakes being made in China, unfortunately. We're fighting it. It's an ongoing process. Um, but we've had many dancers contact us who have come into contact with the fake shoes and had injuries. Whoops. <laughs> and the shoes have broken in very bizarre places. And point shoes aren't right. cheap. Um, so please ensure if you want the real deal that you go to your Nikolai retailer. We have a website, nikolaiworld.com, where you can use the um, stockist locator to find your nearest retailer. 
Um, and it's very important, you guys, keep up to date with information, you know. And if you're very, you know, if you find someone who's selling the fakes, let us know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's very crucial. Um, but don't worry, guys, we're fighting it. You know, pro progress is being made all the time. And the good news is that nowadays, all you peeps in America, you're getting access to the whole range now and the dancewear, the booties, everything. Whereas before, I you were not getting that. I love the booties. They're super great. What ones have you got? Have you got a pair there? Yeah, they're upstairs. I have a pair of pink ones, like oh, plain nice. pale pink. And and a blue, like, sort of shiny one. Oh, lovely. Yeah, they're really, they're, amazing. they're yeah. so durable. And I love the fact that you can wear them on point. You know, it's nice to yeah. be able to go uh, in the theater. It's really nice in the theater because also often um, you have to go outside in theaters. Like, even if it's just like you're on, you've been in the theater all day and you want to, like, go on a five-minute break. Um, and they're, like, durable enough to just be worn, like, outside for however long yeah, the five minutes definitely. you go out. Yeah, so cool. And it keeps your shoes uh, clean from all the like wax from the linoleum backstage. It really does. And I love the fact that we have so many colors and they're unisex and they come in many yeah. sizes. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's just great because you know what? I never realized until I went to, I mean, I've been to America like four times now, but when the very first time that I came to America and I, whenever I go abroad, I do different dance classes and I go to different dance stores and learn about, you know, what goes on out there. And then I was really astounded when I realized back then, even um, before this, all, all this drama happened. And I realized that there wasn't many um, Grishko Nikolai point shoes available. There wasn't many models. And I was like, what's going on? I don't understand. And then it wasn't until, you know, everything um, went down and it all came out what was going on. And I was like, oh, wow. And then we're doing this meet the retailer stream session that we've been doing with retailers across America. It's been very fascinating because you soon learn that, wow, they really didn't have access to all the models and shank shrimps that we, they have now. So it's great news yeah. for those of you in America that have been very curious about trying our brand because it means that now you, God, you have so much availability and it must be so refreshing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, oh, um, can I try on, just briefly, can I show the last pair of the 3007? Yeah. Because I would love to. Yes. Um, even just saying, because it does feel like they break a lot like sharper yeah, than I know what you're the saying. other ones. Too. And then what we're, I'd also like to see you um, after this pair in both of your um, Nova customs on both feet and we can have a little play around and talk a little bit about them. Yes. All right. So Rachel's just putting on a pair of 3007s in, um, I think it's the pro option. Is it the pro option, did you say? I think this one is the standard. I think the other one was the pro. Oh, sure. This one breaks um, more than the other one does. So whichever, whether the pro or the oh, regular no, would, would be break. The pro. If it breaks even more, it'd be okay. the pro version. Okay, so then this is the pro, yeah. But I know what you mean. It's very hard to tell the difference between these two. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Blimey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that really is dramatic. Yes, like this has happened at a, another pair too, and I think part of it is just when they break dramatically, but they will sometimes then like bubble underneath. Yeah, no, I know there. what you mean. Yeah. So the reason why this happens on Rachel is Rachel has very flexible feet um, and very, um, a, you know, amazing strength. But um, for example, the way we would solve this for Rachel in the 3007 is we would probably actually get her in the hard shank in 3007 in a free quarter because the problem with the 3007 shank in a standard or a pro is, is it is very very flexible because it's a different shank construction um could you just take a fifth position from the side please whichever side you want to uh, do on flat on point on like point this. yeah and can you see how it really goes into her arch which is it gives a nice line but it's actually a little bit unstable for for rachel in particular because she's got a very flexible foot instep ankle the whole business going on um, and also, can you notice that the wing of the shoe is just a little bit too low for her? Um, could you come up a little bit close to the camera in a parallel on point, please? Oh, uh, yeah. So can you see um, she gets what happens in a standard Nova where at the side of her joints, her toe joints, she starts to bubble out a little bit, um, which doesn't give her enough support. So she can't lift up enough. But it also makes her just kind of collapse downwards. So she gets a lot of weight on her toes rather than being able to pull up. 
Um, if you just go side on in parallel as well. And here we can see with the wing. Um, so to make this work better, we would custom it and we would change the side quarters, the heel, the shank construction, the way the shank is cut, um, and then do parallel from the other side as well. And yeah, as you can see, she's got a lot of flexibility, which is beautiful, but um, it means that it feels a little bit unstable after time because if she was to do a lot of one footed stuff in these shoes, it would feel not as controlled. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Just wanted to hear well, that. So I do think excellent. it gives I... people an idea of how the shoes look on different feet as well, because it's not often right. that people will see a professional and you know how they how shoes vary on professionals as well. Right. So can we see um, custom Novas on both feet? Yeah. Okay, let's see from parallel one point from the front. So as you can see with the higher wings, it encases her a bit more. I mean, obviously Rachel has worn these a few times now, but when they were super fresh, they would have been a lot more stiffer at the wing there. And then if you turn out mm -hmm. to first position, and as you can see, she's got more support because the shank is stronger at the lower portion and it's melting into her arch at the right angle here. And then if you do parallel from the side on point, And she's more supported. She's not bananaing, which, by the way, when we, when we say bananaing, what we mean by that is she's not going over too far on point. She can really pull herself up. And if we do parallel from the other side, and again, it's a very beautiful line. She's not going too far over. Um, the lower heel and sides makes a huge difference because it shows off more of her arch. Um, if you do from the back in parallel as well, So to make these even more better, we could possibly cut the heel a little bit lower. But what I always say in a custom is we don't go too crazy in case we overdo it. Um, but it's good right. for us to see how they've been breaking in if you turn out to first position. So yeah, we could probably take a little extra half a centimeter off the heel, I reckon, next time. Yeah. yeah. But it's definitely an improvement to last time for sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, do you want to like do a few things on point for us? Whatever you can do whilst you're there. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> they really have a. Um, it's great. Like I can. I feel like I can articulate through my. Yeah, my that's a really point. nice roll through. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. That's been nice, and it's. Um. Yeah. It's uh, much improved from my traditional novas. Yeah. Um, this stream is going to end in one minute. Are you happy to come back on for another 10 minutes or so? Yes, sure. Cool. So everybody watching, if this pings off, you know why. It's because we need to reboot it. Um, and I'll have to reboot it on Grishko World as well. So give me a minute. I'll do it now to make life easier. So come back for part two. <laughs> See you in a bit. <laughs> Hello again. <Come> back. <laughs> Um, um, one other thing, just sorry. briefly, that I wanted to mention, um, yeah. that I I like the Novas a lot, or it was I find them easier to work in than the 3007s, is when the cut mm -hmm. is so dramatic, it's harder, I found it harder to do hops on point. Also, so the Novas, I, the, like, gradual arch, I find easier, and also um, the, the shape of the platform, I think, is part of also what makes, whoa, um, yeah, what makes it easier. So just like when it like sort of more gradual, it makes it easier to make that shape. Oh, uh, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. For some reason, and like because of the smaller platform, also it will 
it's just like harder to balance and it's easier for it to come off this way. Yeah, like, no, right I know what you mean. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, I totally get it. It's really interesting because, um, yeah, the shank. So just to refresh these guys watching, the shank in 3007 to 2007 is um different construction. So like Rachel was mentioning, um, in the, let me grab a 3007, that would help. In a 3007, because the shank construction is more pliable with um, a much easier roll through, the shank tends to um, break lower down. Um, let me just show you, for example. So this is a fresh out the bag medium, but you can see it's already a lot more bendy, which is fantastic for dancers with um, weaker ankles or um, not, not much flexibility in their ankles. But for right. dancers that have um, a lot of range, they will find it a little bit trickier because it's not going to feel as stable and secure as the way that the shank, for example, in the Nova, breaks higher up and is thicker mm -hmm. here. Um, so even in a harder version of 3007, it's still going to break the, the, the way that this one breaks lower down. Um, right. So I, it's good for the viewers to know about this because, um, you know, if you are a 2007 wearer and you have a very defined arch, and quite a lot of flexibility, stick with it. Or, or you know, try our Dreampoint 2007 pre-arched, also known as Allure, Try Nova, or any of the other models built in 2007, mm -hmm. apart from Miracle, because that's quite different. But um, generally speaking, obviously give it a go and see how it feels. But what I'm personally yeah. finding is that if someone has a very flexible foot, is quite strong, they're gonna find the Shanking 3007 very different, and it's, probably not going to be to their kind of needs and re requirements in my opinion um but what i have loved about 3007 is of course for dancers like me that don't have a lot of ankle flexibility that it gets me over because what i used to find in classic 2007 also in nova regardless of shame strength i'd be pulled back um even mm -hmm. in the custom with a shorter vamp and everything else so you know 3007 is, is a great invention it has its place but I would say act with caution if you are flexible or have high arches or, or a very defined um, rotation. Because if you're that mm -hmm. type of dancer that has a foot like Rachel's, for example, it is going to feel very different and not what you're used to. But also it's not, it's not going to break down the way you're used to a shoe breaking down. That's what I'm trying to get across. Right. <laughs> right. And I, I mean, I have, I've been wearing the 3007s also, so definitely, like, they're they're still great shoes. I just sure. been interesting to know no, a little different, isn't it? Because also, it's yeah. really interesting. Um, you know, in different as, as you know, when different moves in ballet feel different in different shanks, they feel different in different shapes of shoes. Um, yeah. And you know, even with platform, I find platform super interesting personally because. Um, I wear a pair of custom 3007s, but also custom Maya ones. Um, mm -hmm. And I still find, you know, they've both got quite a good platform and I get the platform made wider by 20%. But I still, you know, if, if I was to be blindfolded and choose between the two, I would probably mm -hmm. always go for the Maya one because I'm so used to it. And right. it's just become my shoe. And this is another thing to the dancers watching, or maybe you're not on point yet and you're going on point. It takes time to find the shoe, um, but also it's very important to go for a fit infrequently because when you're young, um, especially if you're still growing, a lot can change in a short amount of time, um, especially with technique as well and with different things you'll be learning on point and different roles you're dancing. Um, also, when you're an adult, it's also interesting because um, although you know our bones are set, we're not still growing and there's not much going to change in our ankle flexibility and stuff like that, but we can, you know, get stronger. And also, um, as adults, we feel things differently on point to what, say, a 12-year-old would feel. Um, right. There's so much that goes into fitting, you guys. And it's it really is an art form. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it has been amazing just to see all the, like, little tweaks that you can get done to point shoes and what a difference it makes. Right. It's just mad. But don't yeah. you just love, um, oh, oh, another thing that I really enjoy about um, British Girl Nicolai Point Shoes that I, I never had in um, other brands is I really like how flat the outer sole is. So, you know, like yes. when you're standing, it doesn't feel rickety and you don't have to shake yeah. it down. 
doing adagio in the center makes a it makes a big difference if the <laughs> shank is like really thick or if it's thin Definitely. absolutely totally agree with that by the way has anyone got any questions for rachel you can pop them in the comment box and i'll get um you know the comments passed over uh, it's so exciting to know that your fittings you'll be able to start doing fittings in in person soon also i know i can't wait honestly it's going to make such a difference because i have like yeah. such a waiting list um right for anyone curious about what I do, um, I'm a Grishko Nikolai Master Fitter, and I travel all over the UK and worldwide now. Um, and I should be coming back to America at some stage very soon, and I will hopefully be doing a little tour around retailers and studios. Um, so that'll be an opportunity for you guys to get fitted by me in person. Um, I will be starting to try and travel Europe as well I'm gonna work on that because I'm I'm really I just want to get to as many places as I can because not only do I want to fit far and wide but I also want to educate retailers a bit more about the brand and um, the differences between the models because it is very overwhelming because we have so much so much selection it is absolutely mind-blowing yeah. um and at home I have a fitting room it's small but it, it does the job and I have a lot of shoes like I, my house is overrun by shoes right <laughs> and you can come to my fitting room seven days a week I work right up to late evenings but it's obviously you have to book in advance so just drop me an email or an Instagram message or something like that and we can arrange something when it gets back yeah. to school season I do warn you it gets insane um I am literally right. all over the place so right. um, I travel to studios directly and do things there. Generally speaking, I'd spend an hour, sometimes longer. If you're tricky, I never rush you. I always, um, you know, will take my quality time with everybody. I'm not the type of fitter who does an in and out job. That's just not my style. I am very particular. Um, so always expect attention to detail with me because I certainly <laughs> give attention to detail, that's for sure. <laughs> I feel like professional dancers um, spend so much of their time thinking about their point shoes and like just trying to figure out whether it's like choosing the shoe for the show or thinking about if you're trying to switch between brands um, or like whether you have enough shoes, preparing your shoes. There's just like so much. Point shoes are such a huge part of yes. our lives. So. Yes, they're your tools of your trade at the end of the day. But yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm. Oh, this is a good question, actually. So, with your fellow dancers in your company, imagine like you're all sitting around prepping your shoes or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Do you notice that by wearing Grishko Nikolai point shoes, that literally you're just getting your shoes, putting them on, doing a little bit of breaking in, but nothing bonkers, and you're like good to go. And then there's other dancers that are shaving their sole, cutting their shanks, banging them on the floor. <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually, it's actually a really good point. Um, there, yeah, I don't, I don't really have to do, sometimes I do like a little, um, a little bend. Um, but apart from just sewing them, I can just put them on and, and start dancing, which is really nice. Um, so it's, it's, it is there. I had a couple of pairs of shoes at one point where I had to, like when I was just trying out different shoes where I had to do a lot of work to them. Um, and it's amazing, even just because sewing shoes in general takes time. So then to have to do a bunch of other like preparation <laughs> thing which ends up taking up so much time so i'm so grateful imagine. that yeah a lot of dancers do have to do a lot of preparation and oh i gosh. don't feel like i do i just sew them and put them on <laughs> so it's great and you know like what i find i love social media it's amazing but it does bother me a little bit because <sighs> there's videos you know on the internet of professionals preparing their shoes doing all this crazy stuff and dancers who aren't professionals think that they've now got to do that to their shoes to make them work. And then right. I also get, you know, sometimes I even get parents of dancers that are like, oh, well, we saw her favorite dancer and she does this to her shoes. And she said right. she does it because of this. And her foot actually looks quite similar. So um, we tried to do that. And I'm, I'm like, hold up, right. hold up. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I think it's tricky because as a professional, like, you're in your point shoes for so for so long every day and, and you need them to work with you in a specific way. So obviously professionals are finding their own yes, um, exactly. tricks of the trade. But it's it's very I mean I, I definitely never did anything to my shoes when I I mean I still don't do anything to them, but I definitely never did anything to them when I was in school. And I think it probably oh. can be tricky just because it does especially if it, it seems like um it's possible to find a shoe that will work with you and you won't have to do anything, any of the extra stuff. Um, 
So sometimes it seems like it's worth it to find that shoe. Yeah, and it's like, also to um, the younger dancers watching, when you go for a thing, be sure to communicate. And if you are feeling that something isn't right to you, speak up. I know it can be a bit nerve wracking sometimes if you're going somewhere you've not been fitted before, or maybe you're, you know, I mean, you're the type of person who's quite shy. I was like that once, believe it or not. <laughs> I used to be very quiet and I never used to speak up about yes. anything. And it would take a lot for me to complain about if something I was feeling. So, you know, communication really is key with point shoes because the fitter can see what's going on from the outside, but we can't always right. know for sure what you are feeling on the inside of the shoe. So you've really right. got to work together to work out the problems and solutions but also, you know, sometimes I also feel some fitters just throw people in something because it's all they have at the time rather than say, I'll order that in for you or I'll customize that for you. If, yeah. you know, for example, you guys, if you um, have any Grishko Nikolai pointers that you want to try and your retailer doesn't have them, you can ask them to get them and they can get them very quick. We are, you know, for example, usually a week to get something that's in stock. If it's something out of stock, it will take just up to 14 days. So it really is a, f a fast turnaround now compared to what you guys had yeah. in the US before. Um, yeah, it was, I got my shoes, the shoes that you, um, that when we had our virtual fitting and then you ordered them for me, I got them way quicker than I have ever gotten shoes before. Wow. Um, that's yeah, so it was amazing. Yeah. That is so awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm so I'm so pleased that these overs are looking a lot better. We're we're on a really good track yeah. with them now. I feel. Um, yeah. But what we'll do is when they're starting to get to the end of their life, um, we'll do another mm -hmm. um, virtual fitting, and we can Great. see what other tweaks we can make because you know yeah. it is a work in progress. We're, we're getting there every bit mm -hmm. of the way. We're making um, yeah. perfections along the way, and also of course when yeah. you're properly dancing and you're we'll figure out what roles you're doing and how it's going to affect the yeah. shoe. Then we can start yeah. thinking about what pair we'll have for what role and how it's going to affect you, you know, and what things we need to tweak about the shoe to suit that role. Um, right. That's also very interesting too. Um, I'm just going to yeah. get these stats up again. I'm just trying to remember what else I did with your shoes. Get my notes up. So for those of you just tuning in, um, I did save part one and I will be uploading it later on. So don't worry if you missed out. Um, Rachel is uh, Nikolai um, Grishko, uh, brand ambassador with us. And she um, has been speaking about her shoes and everything else and all the recent events in the world. And we was just going through trying on point shoes. We tried on her custom order Novas that I helped her with, which looked Absolutely wonderful. Um, and the notes for those, I'm just getting them up now. Oh, yeah, because I put the easy roll through in. So that's why you felt the the demi point a lot better in the um, custom Novas. Yeah, sorry. Yes. That's the easy right. roll through. <laughs> into the um, could you, do you still have them on, by the way? Yeah. Whoops. Could you do, um, show us um, first position from the front and just do some like rolls up to full point and back down again so we can show these guys how that it looks. Very nice. See, Rachel has really good control in these and she's really getting that demi point and being able to manipulate every little part of the shoe, which yeah. is exactly what we want. And as you can see, even when she tondu, she can really push through and work every ounce. Which is fantastic. Does that, does even ton, doing a tondu in them feel different to your normal Novas? Yes, definitely. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Just feeling like my control muscles can actually like manipulate the shoe versus just like not not doing anything yeah i know what you mean <laughs> where it's like you're almost fighting the shoe to try and point yeah exactly. yeah nice well thank um, you so again and i love <gasps> hi ingrid hi eugene ballet academy <laughs> hi guys 
So Rachel also has on some of the Nikolai dance wear as well. Um, do you want to just show us again what you've got on? This is um, Nikolai leotard and skirt and my lovely new dance bag. And I, I didn't, I don't have them with me just because I left them upstairs, but I love the toe inserts that dry out your shoes too. Oh, They've yeah. been super helpful in um, making them last longer. Here. Hang on, let me find them one moment. Yeah. So what Rachel's talking about is the um, drying inserts. So let me talk to you a little bit about what they do. They are designed to be put into the inside of the point shoe box when you're finished wearing them. And they have like silica gel on the inside. And um, obviously we can in Europe get the Grishko ones as well because Nikolai is the American name. And you're going to pop them inside. So they sit inside of your box. And they basically whip out all the moisture because, of course, especially if you're doing a long amount of time in your point shoes or you're in a humid climate even, um, or you have very sweaty feet, they're just going to be marvellous for that. And the idea is, is all that moisture gets stored out. And you can stand your point shoes up like this to dry or hang them. And then when you're done, just pop them out. And they last um, a good few months, which is fantastic. And it will extend the life of the paste and the platform. Because if you're the type of dancer that you find your box or your platform goes a bit soggy too quickly, um, then these are definitely a, a good thing for you guys to get. They, oh yes, it says expiry date, three months from the first use. And I just want to remind you guys that you might not be aware, it's always important to not keep your point shoes um, in your dance bag and get them soggy. Always take them out to dry because you really are going to notice a difference in the lifespan. And I've also noticed some dancers just like leave their soggy toe pads in their point shoes, which again is a no-go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. So that's the drying inserts, which is a super cool invention. Okay. Um, so if anyone's got any last minute comments or questions, you can pop them in below and we'll answer you there. And yeah. thank you so much for helping me out with this and for taking the time to chat. And it's oh, nice to hear about the, great. yeah, about Grishko and how they're um, moving forward as a company. Yes. And um, So let's remind yeah. people. Um, so with Grishko and Nikolai, we um, actually bought out some different shades of satin and canvas back in February um which were announced at the atlantic dance retail show in los angeles but also dance here in feria in um, italy and we announced it to retailers first but we obviously wanted to bring them out to the nation but due to the pandemic we unfortunately couldn't get all our fabrics together to do our big announcement but finally we can now do it so if you're not sure about the info go to grishko world and nikolai world and you can see the post with the different shades we have available which is very exciting um and we're very you know thrilled to finally be able to offer you guys what we've always wanted to do like this has been a long time coming i have wanted this for so long also so i'm very thrilled to be able to offer my customers this because it's you know I, it's as you probably guys know especially with pancaking point shoes it's very difficult um so it's very nice to be able to have this option even in canvas as well um, Charlotte, who is one of our NG generation, has just said, will you be one of the company members on our Meet the Dancer events during the virtual ABT summer intensive? Um, hi, Charlotte. I don't think I will be, but I know that whoever you're meeting will be amazing. All of my colleagues are fabulous. Um, and we actually had a like an internal meeting, um, and it was a part of uh, the race committee, which will now be sort of heading DEI um, events and work within the company. Anyways, while we were on it, they were saying that you guys, I guess, were having a meeting with Misty um, as one of the, like, during the summer intensive. And we were all like, oh, I wish we could hear what she was saying. I'm sure it's amazing, and I'm sure they're loving it. So I oh, know that so all cool. of them, yeah, whatever, whichever company members you're meeting, they're all going to be amazing. Um, and I'd love to hear about them. Feel free and shoot me a message just saying who you met or listened to and um, ask good questions, too. They're all really intelligent yeah. people. So. That's Feel free and challenge. Really cool. Oh, I see the junior oh, dancers. Well, yeah, yeah. 
Fabulous. Okay, so um, we'll leave this stream here for today, but I will be super interested to do some future streams. We could even do um, some more live class streams as well, if you're up for it at some point. Yeah. That yeah. would be fabulous. Do you know what would be really cool? If you could, have you, have you ever taught a point bar for us on here? No, but I that absolutely would be, could. That'd be cool. I'd be totally yeah. stoked to do that. Oh my God, you know, yeah. um, you was doing, oh, you was doing Zoom classes for that. Was it Ballet Together or whatever it's called? I did, yes. I taught a couple classes for Ballet Together. Yeah, because I was trying to make one of those. I ended up having to, oh, it would have been so virtual fun. fitting. I was so annoyed because I really wanted to go. <laughs> it's been challenging because, um, so I'm home in Oregon, um, and ballet company or ballet schools are opening to have like socially distant um, summer intensives here. So I've been asked to teach a lot of those in person classes. So I haven't really been able to teach. Um, I couldn't keep teaching on ballet together just because I had um, too many other classes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, things happening but it would be so I would love to do one because it would be so fun to have you in class oh god yeah it'd be fun um we could also get the NG generation involved as well that'd be fun um, yeah absolutely yeah that'd be so cool great um do you know also do you know what I thought about I haven't done any live streams on my YouTube channel before and I have a lot of different followers on there to what I have on Instagram um so I really should do something yeah. on there sometime as well um to see yeah. what kind of audience we get because also the good thing right. with YouTube is um, it connects to Google very well. So like when you're using Google as a search engine, it really picks up the stuff that you've done on YouTube more than Instagram, I find, due to the SEO right. properties. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining. If you missed part one, don't worry, I'm going to upload it. Um, it's been wonderful. We also did a stream earlier on with Isabel and Dee's Dancewear, which was fantastic. I'm also going to upload that. I've got a lot of work ahead of me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much so fun to chat with you always no worries it's been great and um yeah we'll keep in touch and i'll message you near the time for an update on what we're going to do with your next shoes and stuff yeah absolutely i'm loving Can't them wait. thanks again <laughs> thank yeah. you so much thank All you right, bye, for tuning in. bye